Hey everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Jim Sonis, who's here to take a look at DFS for week number 15. What's happening, Jim? I am all good, Greg. There are a couple of games on this slate for week 15 that look pretty enticing, and we can stack up both sides, and that's the way I want to play DFS in tournaments, so I am pretty pumped about that. How are you doing today? Outside of desperately needing a haircut, feeling good, man. I'm excited to get into week 15, excited to make some money, excited to do it with you, Jim. I used to understand the need for a haircut, and for some reason, I no longer have that need. I can't quite put my finger on why, but for some reason, I don't have that need. But I, old Jim, understands your struggle right now, and I am with you here to help you through that struggle. Winning money will get me through the struggle, so I appreciate it, and that's what you're here for. So let's begin in Kansas City, where Patrick Mahomes, Tyreek Hill, and the bunch defeated the New England Patriots this past Sunday. This week, the matchup gets a bit easier. Division rival, Denver Broncos. You start off our stacks this week, pairing up the quarterback despite battling a hand injury with Tyreek Hill. How come? Yeah, I think watching that game for Patrick Mahomes, there was still a lot of zip on his passes after that hand injury. He didn't play that well, but, you know, against the Pats defense in Foxborough, you don't really expect a whole lot out of them. So I'm personally willing to overlook it. Andy Reid says it's good to go. So I'm willing to go back to the Chiefs here. And I think that, interestingly enough, The play of Drew Locke makes the Chiefs more appealing here because Locke has been competent, and that's going to be tough this week going on the road to face the Chiefs. But if he can score some points, that's going to force the Chiefs to keep their foot on the pedal, which is good for Patrick Mahomes and also good for Tyree Kill. So Drew Locke playing well is actually beneficial for this passing offense here. And when I'm going at this passing offense, to me, it's just a time where we're waiting for Tyree Kill to have a freakout game, which could happen this weekend because his market shares recently have been nuts. They have had only three games so far this year in which all of Sammy Watkins, Tyree Kill, Travis Kelsey, and Patrick Mahomes have been healthy. But in those three games, Tyreek Hill has 30% of the team's targets. He has 12 of 22 deep targets. And despite that insane usage, because they've had some weird spots, they've had some wind, some bad matchups, his salary is back down to $7,900. I think that's very advantageous for this spot. If the wind goes back up like it was for that Oakland game, then maybe you want to pedal back. But overall, if we get Tyreek Hill in a really attractive spot, I think he is on the verge of a huge game. And if he does blow up, it'll be uh, with Patrick Mahomes coming along with him. So I think this is a good spot to go at this Chiefs offense. Again, I think that Drew Locke is starting for this game really does help them. And I think that this Chiefs team is on the verge of a blow up, given what we've seen from them recently and given the use of Tyree Kill, that could be this weekend. So I want to go here. I want to buy into this Chiefs offense before they get fully healthy and before they have that big game and remind us of how good they can be. And I think there's a chance it could be this weekend against Denver. As a season-long fantasy owner of Tyreek Hill, I'm with you, man. Let's get that. Let's get them back on schedule here. More touchdowns for Tyreek Hill, more yards as well. Against Denver, a fine spot for the two of them to go off. As you said, Patrick Mahomes looks fine. Looked all right. The zip was still there, and hopefully it will be there, obviously, on Sunday, specifically to Tyreek Hill. Moving on from the Kansas City Chiefs, we get to the Los Angeles Rams, where, hey, Jared Goff to Robert Woods is a connection that has been working as Cooper Cup has seen more time on the bench. Robert Woods finally got into the end zone through the air. A monstrous outing coming off a monstrous three weeks of outings. Jared Goff to Robert Woods has been a winnable combination for fantasy owners recently. Yeah, and I expect that to continue this weekend because this game is, I think, the best game on the slate. It involves the teams that are ranked third and fourth in situation-neutral pace, according to Football Outsiders, and we want to stack games that are high-paced like that. The Cowboys' offense really good at home, and this Rams' offense is good when they're not facing elite defense. This will be just the third or the fifth time this year that the Rams have faced a team in the bottom half of the league in pass defense based on number fires metrics as the Cowboys are 20th there, and When they face those teams, Jared Goff has been very good. Now, you could mention the road Jared Goff narrative here because traditionally he doesn't do as well on the road, but Goff's four best games this year by passing that expected points have all come outside of Los Angeles. One was in London. The other three were all on the road. So going to Jerry's world, playing indoors, I think it's a pretty good spot to go at Jared Goff. And the most logical stacking guy with him right now, as you said, is Robert Woods in the past three games. Since he came back from that uh, game missed due to a personal issue, Woods has 34% of the team's targets. He has had at least 95 receiving yards in four consecutive games. And Robert Woods has made a perfect FanDuel lineup twice this year, despite not scoring a touchdown in either of those games. So 
He does need a touchdown to pay off because the yardage upside is so good and he gets so many receptions. This guy is kind of a very unique case for fantasy. He is $7,500, and I want to go at Woods here. I think that you could go at Tyler Higby, too, if Gerald Everett can't go. It's just kind of hard to trust Brandon Cooks and Cooper Cup, given the snap rates that they had in Week 14. So I'm going to take the path of least resistance here, go with Robert Woods. I think that Higby is in play, too, and I also wouldn't mind stacking Jared Goff with Todd Gurley if you decide you want to go there as well. Jerry Goff's the key for the Los Angeles Rams in DFS lineups, and I thought the stat you just gave uh, was awesome, Jim. Robert Woods, part of two perfect lineups here thus far this year, and he only scored a touchdown receiving once last week. So it's crazy how good he has been for fantasy despite not getting in the end zone. Now he's getting into the end zone, and it could be even better. Jerry Goff paired with Robert Woods, or Todd Gurley, who uh, Sean McVay, clearly making an effort to get the ball more to you. Makes a lot of sense. As Cooper Cup kind of fades away a little bit in this offense. The Dallas Cowboys last week, it was a performance to forget against the Chicago Bears. But for all the fantasy uh, players in this game, it worked out, including for the Cowboys with Amari Cooper, Michael Gallup, Ezekiel Elliott, and yes, Dak Prescott. This week, you go back to the well with the Dallas Cowboys, specifically with Prescott and Gallup. Why Gallup over Cooper? I think the matchup here is pretty tough for Amari Cooper squaring off with Jalen Ramsey. Now, Amari Cooper is good enough to beat any individual matchup, so I'm not saying you can't use Amari Cooper but I'm also okay taking the easy way out here and going with Michael Gallup. If you look at the game since their bye week, Michael Gallup actually does lead this team in targets. Now, Amari Cooper has been kind of banged up in that time, so it's worth noting that, but Gallup's been getting a lot of looks, and he's been good when he has gotten that volume too. So I like Michael Gallup quite a bit here, and the reason I'm into this Cowboys offense in general, despite the fact the Rams have been playing well with Jalen Ramsey outside of that Ravens game, is that they're at home, and this Cowboys offense is disgusting. If you look at the games since the Amari Cooper trade last year. Dak Prescott averages 8.8 passing yards per attempt at home compared to 7.4 on the road. That is a massive, massive difference. Dak has still been good on the road. Don't get me wrong there, but when he's at home, he's kind of superhuman. We also get Dak uh, where he will run quite a bit in the red zone. They should have some scoring chances here because they are at home in a what projects to be a very high scoring game. And I don't think a lot of people will go Dak Prescott's way, given the negativity around the Cowboys right now, and given the fact that people did just see this Rams defense play really well against Russell Wilson on Sunday night. So I think there are a lot of factors here that should help push the interest in Dak Prescott down, but I think he makes sense. Whenever Dak Prescott is at home, regardless of what the matchup may be, this is a guy you want to target. I think that he should go overlooked here. You can pair him with Michael Gallup. I think that's a pretty, a pretty high-octane stack for this weekend. I think that, again, I do want to reiterate, Amari Cooper is still in play. You can stack Dak with Zeke, Zeke Elliott as well. But I think that the best way to do so here, if you have one lineup, is stacking Dak Prescott with Michael Gallup. Certainly an option here against the Rams for uh, Michael Gallup and Dak Prescott. We'll see if they could uh, be the high-scoring team that we've seen in the past, or they struggle, as we've also seen, right? An inability to really score in that first half outside of Ezekiel Elliott, outside of that first scripted drive. So we'll see which Dallas team we get on Sunday between the Rams and the Cowboys. Should be a good one. A high-scoring affair, no doubt. Up next, we get to the Cleveland Browns, and certainly not Odell Beckham Jr., who Baker Mayfield said isn't healthy, and our medical team screwed up. That, that's typical Baker. So instead of targeting Odell Beckham, he's been targeting his favorite wide receiver, Jarvis Landry. Jim, you and I have talked about how Baker's favorite target isn't OBJ. It's clearly Landry, and that's proven week after week after week. In this matchup against the Arizona Cardinals, people have spoken about David Njoku as someone to target. But you're going with Jarvis Landry paired up with his quarterback. How come? Yeah, the usage for Jarvis Landry is just kind of just too good for me to ignore at this point because the sample on this Browns team since Kareem Hunt made his debut, which is kind of the tipping point here for this Browns team, is getting larger and larger, and Jarvis Landry's role within it just keeps getting solidified as being legitimate. He has 31% of the team's targets in those games since Kareem Hunt's debut and 44% of the deep targets. We don't think of Jarvis Landry as being this deep threat, but in this Freddie Kitchens offense in 2019, he has been exactly that. He actually has more targets and more deep targets than Beckham in this time. I still think that Beckham is in play because we've seen him have good games against the Dolphins. And this Cardinals pass defense is atrocious. They're ranked 31st against the pass based on number of fires metrics. They slowed things down a bit more recently, but I think we could see them speed things back up this weekend against a lesser Browns defense. So I do think that Beckham is still an option, just not for cash games. If you want to go here in cash games, it is Jarvis Landry, and Landry is straight up the better play for tournaments as well. So I do want to go at him at $7,400. And that defense, that bad pass defense and that pace 
is what pushes me towards Baker Mayfield as well. Again, 31st against the pass. He gets to play indoors this weekend after doing some win last weekend. So I think it's a good spot to buy back into the Browns. I like both sides of this game. I think it's a pretty fun game overall. And I think that the most logical route here is Baker Mayfield paired with Jarvis Landry. And even if you're not stacking Baker, I would try to get Jarvis Landry in your lineups then too. All right, fair enough. The options are there for you with Cleveland. Jarvis Landry, the must-play, cash games, tournaments, what have you. He's the guy you want to go with, pairing up him up with Baker Mayfield, who's been obviously inconsistent. Certainly makes sense if you want to stack another game we expect to be high-scoring. And if it's going to be high-scoring, Jim, not just on one side, right? It's with Cleveland and it's with Arizona. That's up next, and that's Kyler Murray and Christian Kirk. I was thinking about Christian Kirk earlier this week as someone in season-long leagues who I feel like everyone's going to be on top of next year. They think we got a little bit of a breakout this year. The massive one's going to come next year. But in this matchup against Cleveland, which, as I said, we expect to be high scoring, getting in on the Christian Kirk game starts now. Absolutely agree, Greg, because the usage of Christian Kirk has been really, really good recently. We're looking specifically here at the time since Kenyon Drake joined this team and got the team another legitimate pass catcher. And in that time, Christian Kirk has 25% of the Cardinals overall targets and 36% of the deep targets. So not quite as good usage as we've seen out of Jarvis Landry, but still very good. And he is very clearly the top option in this offense. And I think that's why we've seen the Cardinals struggle at times recently, because they faced some good individual cornerbacks and when Christian Kirk can't get open, this offense has a lot of difficulties moving the football. But I think they should be able to get open this weekend, despite the fact the Browns do have some pretty good corners. And that bodes well for Christian Kirk at $6,100. The reason I like Kyler Murray here is that the Browns are missing a lot of pieces here. There is no Miles Garrett. There is no Morgan Burnett. And we've seen the effects of that their past couple of games. Teams have been able to move the ball on them, even though they've been bad all year. Kyler Murray, yeah, his past two games have not been good, but they faced really good teams. This will be the first time that Kyler has faced a pass defense ranked outside the top 12 since week 10. In that game, he had 27.76 FanDuel points. He is further removed from that hamstring injury now. It should bode well for him, too. So I think it's kind of arrows up here on this Cardinals team. If you can't quite afford Jarvis Landry and Baker Mayfield, you can pay down, still get exposure to this game, and stack the other side with Kyler Murray and Christian Kirk. Kirk at $6,100, I think, just has a usage where you kind of want to jam this guy in. And I think that it makes a lot of sense to pair him with Kyler Murray, too. Just kind of the no-brainer guys on this team. It's a lot of murkiness elsewhere, but you know what you're going to get with Kyler Murray and Christian Kirk, and that is a lot of volume. And in, I think in this matchup, some good efficiency, too. A lot of volume with efficiency. It's a combination that we want. The usage for Christian Kirk has been outrageous recently. I know Kyler Murray has struggled, but this week against Cleveland, it could be a get-right spot. It's a stack that I don't expect many people to go with, but it's a good stack here with Arizona as fast-paced as they are. Give me Christian Kirk. Give me Kyler Murray in a surprise stack in tournaments. You want to talk about surprise stacks? That's where our last one is here, Jim, and that brings us the New York Giants, where they've obviously struggled this year. We saw uh, on Monday night those struggles. But you're going to a stack with them here against the Miami Dolphins. You're choosing to go with Saquon Barkley, who's underwhelmed truly all season long. And then the, the Giants defense, that's just straight up terrible. Now, I get it. They're facing the Dolphins and Ryan Fitzpatrick. But I know your strategy. You pair up a running back with the defense in a game that you expect the team to dominate. But what, what are we doing here? I mean, if you don't want to use them, I will. That's totally fine by right me ahead. because they're thirty. <laughs> they're $3,900, Greg, at home facing the Dolphins. The Dolphins may not have Devontae Parker for this game. I think that you can use them no matter what. But if Devontae Parker can't go, this, this Giants defense becomes even more attractive because – the the Dolphins offense, you know, they've been better recently, but they're still a team we can target because Ryan Fitzpatrick prone to blow ups, not the uh, not, not the most conservative quarterback by any means, which we will certainly take from a defensive perspective. And I think that sets up well for Saquon Barkley, too, because even though the output has not been there, the volume has been. He has averaged 17.7 carries per game since their bye week, along with 4.7 targets. He just hasn't been efficient. But you can expect better efficiency against this Dolphins defense. They are ranked 32nd against the pass and 25th against the rush based on number of fires metrics. And we're getting a guy with good usage at home in a great matchup for $8,300. I think that bodes really well for Saquon Barkley this weekend. And I don't. I think people will go here. I think that they will overlook the box score and go to Saquon because of the matchup. But I don't care all that much when I'm getting a high usage back at home in a spot like this. And I think pairing him with the Giants defense at $3,900 makes a lot of sense. Yeah, they are bad. 
but so is the Dolphins offense, especially if they don't have their playmaker, Devontae Parker, out there. So I will go with the stack. Greg, I understand if you are not convinced. That is totally okay. But, hey, it's just lower ownership for me. Good for you, man. Get the low ownership. But I am not jumping in on this giant stack. Maybe I'm a homer, and that's fine. But I know how bad this defense is. I don't care if Devontae Parker's not there. You got Albert Wilson. You got Isaiah Ford. And you <laughs> got Allen Hearns. That's enough for me to not pick the Giants. I like Kaseki too. I'm good on this stack. It's all yours, Jim. But when you win a million, just, just split it with your buddy. <laughs> That's going to do it for us here on the FanDuel. Hurry up, Jim. It's been a blast. Let's do it again tomorrow. Absolutely. And I promise there will be no talk of the Giants defense there. So we'll, uh, maybe on the other side, maybe we'll talk about the Dolphins there instead. You can, you can bash the Giants defense then. But I appreciate it, Greg, and we'll talk to you then. Oh, I'm excited to talk about the Dolphins. Ryan Fitzpatrick, Patrick Laird, and the rest of this Dolphins crew. So for Jim Sonis, I am Greg Sussman. Thank you so much for checking out the FanDuel. Hurry up, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.